Lesson 9.3c, Using Exponents with Grouping Symbols. Parentheses, grouping symbols, are the first step in the order of operations, and correctly using the order of operations ensures that everyone who simplifies the same expression will get the same answer. So here we have some grouping symbols. We have parentheses, and parentheses can also be used to indicate multiplication. I've explained that before. If we have a number or even a variable right next to the parentheses, that means we're multiplying them. Same with brackets. Brackets look like boxes. And here we have braces. Some people call them curly braces, but they're kind of wiggly. Those are braces. And we have our fraction bar, which is also called a vinculum. So this fraction bar can be considered as a grouping symbol and also indicates division because whatever the numerator is, is divided by the denominator. A term is a part of an expression that is added or subtracted. So the terms of an expression are separated by an addition symbol and a subtraction symbol, a plus and a minus. Here we have a numerical expression and we have a plus sign here, we have a minus sign here. So this expression contains three terms. We have one here, we have one here, we have one here. They're separated by the plus and minus symbols. When we simplify the terms of an expression, we begin with the grouping symbols. And if we see more than one set of grouping symbols, we begin with the innermost first and work outward. The innermost grouping symbols here are these parentheses. So we're going to do this numerator, 5 plus 3. We're going to get an 8. We can see that it's raised to the second power. So we have 8 raised to the second power. Now we do the exponent. And we see we have two exponents. We have 8 raised to the second power and 4 raised to the second power. That's going to give us a 64 as our numerator and a 16 as our denominator. Now we divide within the parentheses. 64 divided by 16 is 4. Now we multiply. 5 times 4 is 20 minus 2. We subtract. We get 18. So if we see more than one set of grouping symbols, we begin with the innermost first and we slowly work outward. So remember, when a number is directly next to the parentheses, it indicates multiplication. Here we have 5 times 4, which is 20. Here we have 4 times 2 thirds. We can write the 4 as a 4 over 1 and do 4 times 2 with the numerators to get an 8. And 1 times 3, we get 8 thirds. Here, we do inside the parentheses first. That's the first step. 12 divided by 4 is 3. We have an exponent. 3 raised to the second power is 3 times 3. That's 9. And now we multiply. 3 times 9 is equal to 27. And we skip any step that is not in the list. There was no addition, so we didn't do any addition. There was no subtraction. We didn't do any subtraction. We ended with the multiplication. Here we have parentheses and two exponents. We start with in the parentheses first. 15 minus 3 is equal to 12. We have 4 raised to the third power. That means 4 times 4 times 4. 4 times 4 is 16, and 16 times 4 is 64. So we have 64 here, and 12 raised to the second power is 12 times 12. That's 144. We add 144 plus 64, and it's equal to 208. Here we have parentheses here and parentheses here. We can see that this one is for multiplication because the 5 is right up next to it. We have 72 divided by 13 minus 4. Well, 13 minus 4 is 9, so we have 72 divided by 9. And we've got 2 raised to the third power. That's 2 times 2 times 2. That's an 8, so that means we have 5 times 8. The next thing we do is we're multiplying or dividing, so 
72 divided by 9 is 8. And now we can multiply because we go left to right, whichever comes first. So we're going to do the division and then this multiplication. We've got an 8 plus 40. Then we add or subtract from left to right, whichever comes first. And we only have addition. We have 48. So remember, for the multiply or divide, it's from left to right, whichever comes first. And the add or subtract is from left to right, whichever comes first. Remember, when an exponent is on the outside of the parentheses, it means this entire operation is raised to the second power. The exponent affects the base that it's next to, which includes operations within parentheses. 2 plus 6 is equal to 8. That means we have 8 raised to the second power over 4. We do our exponent. This is 8 times 8, which is 64. We have 64 divided by 4. That's 16. Now be very, very careful because 2 plus 6 raised to the second power does not mean 2 raised to the second power plus 6 raised to the second power. We need to do within the parentheses first because of this addition symbol. Same thing if it was subtraction. We know that 2 plus 6 is 8, so that's 8 raised to the second power. That's equal to 64. If we split it up like this, we'd have 2 times 2 is 4, and 6 times 6 is 36. We'd get a 40. So it's very important that you do within the parentheses first when we see addition or subtraction, okay? If we see a fraction that has 8 raised to the second power as the numerator and 4 as the denominator, we evaluate the exponent first, then we simplify the fraction. This is 64 fourths. 64 divided by 4 is 16. We do not simplify the fraction first. If we think 8 divided by 4 is 2 and then try sticking that exponent on there, we know that this is equal to 16. 2 raised to the second power is a 4. So these are this is not equal to 2 raised to the second power, okay? So that's wrong. We do the exponent first, then we simplify. So as I mentioned in the beginning of the video, we have braces and brackets too. So if we see more than one set of grouping symbols, we start with the innermost first and slowly work our way outward. If we see this, we're going to start with the 3 plus 1. That means we have 2 times 4. Now we're going to do what's within the brackets here. We have 2 times 4. That's an 8. Now we're going to do what's within the braces. And we have 5 plus 8. That's a 13. We have 50 minus 13, which is equal to 37. So it's really not that difficult if you just start at the inside, the innermost grouping symbols, and slowly work your way outward. We're finished with Module 9. We're moving on to Module 10. And 10.1 is split into three parts. And we're going to start with writing algebraic expressions. I sure am proud of you for getting this far. And I hope you have a really nice day. Bye.